Hello everybody, you're listening to Content Creators Club. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Content Creators Club is a series of broadcasts that briefly highlight certain portions of books that I'm currently writing or books that I have already written. For you to get some more information on what I share with you in the Content Creators Club series, then go to PastorAlfred.com and when you are there, make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, you will be able to get updates when new broadcasts are posted and also you will be able to get alerts when new books I publish are available to the public. The topic of today's broadcast is if having zero views makes you stop producing contents instead of improving the content you create, then you don't deserve to have any viewers, as is the case. Let us go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 10. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Do not despise these small beginnings for the lord rejoices to see the work begin to see the plumb line in zerubbabel's hand the seven lamps represents the eyes of the lord that search all around the world praise the lord what i want us to focus on is is actually the beginning portion of that scripture which is do not despise these small beginnings you know the phrase despise not the days of small beginnings is a very popular phrase and it's very important you must understand that all big things start small all mighty trees was once just a tiny or a relatively small seed you know so everything starts small and you must learn to understand patience there was one saying that i recently heard in an old classic movie and it's that the patience man basically it translates as a patience man will be rewarded but a man who is not patient there's never enough time you know for the man who is not patient so you see when you are not patient there will never be enough time for you that is the life that you would live you know, it just like um, in the case of money, if you don't learn how to be content, you are going to be in a situation where your whole life, no matter how much you acquire, you will still view yourself and live a life of someone who is chasing all the things you don't have. So your entire life is chasing all the things you don't have. You might say, oh, I need a million dollars that's what i need to get but guess what when you get a million dollars you will now have a million dollar life and then it will be you surrounded by in most cases people who also have millions or even more and then because you never learned to be content or live with purpose and grow with purpose your goal of increasing financially was not deeper and personal or based on a personal principle that is not embedded in vanity you know because of that you will find yourself seeking to make now 10 million when you get that 10 million you would feel that you will die if you do not have a hundred million when you get that hundred million you will feel like you will die if you don't get a billion so you see it's a problem of constant slavery because you are not content in the same way you must learn to be patient you must learn to be patient just like you must learn to be content and as you strive in the case of contentment as you strive to increase and grow it should be based on a deeper purpose like for example if your motivation for making 
money and to grow your business is so that you can be more productive and so that you can help people so that you can have to give you know scripture says and you can be a blessing to people if that's where your eye is that's a deep and a powerful thing that will help you and sustain you and it will keep you it's something that is for your own good you must understand that when you look through the bible and god tells us to do things he's not telling us to do it as a test like ah let me see if you can stay away from adultery thou shalt not commit adultery let me see if you can stay away from killing people. Thou shalt not kill. Let me see if you can stay away from lying. Don't tell lies. No, it is not a matter of God trying to test us. It's a matter of God sees that this is dangerous for us, so we shouldn't do it. You know, it's like a baby that wants to play with a poisonous snake, you know, or a baby that wants to do something that to eat its harmless but you can see that it is something that is going to kill it like a baby crawling towards fire you know it's curious about the fire and the baby crawls towards the fire you see it and then you rush and you stop and you and you save that baby it is not like you are trying to create a bunch of rules around what the baby can do or cannot do you understand that the fire is going to burn the baby. You understand that that is dangerous. So that is the same way it is with scripture. When you see God telling us not to do something, it is not a matter of God testing our endurance and our ability to obey laws. It's a matter of he has seen, he is wiser than us. He sees that this is dangerous for us. This is going to kill us. So he saves us from it and says, don't do this. Don't do that, you know. It's kind of like when you buy a product and you are given a manual, an instruction manual. When you deviate far from what the instruction manual says it is safe to do. A lot of instruction manuals have um, diagrams and parts of the manual where you can see an X marked upon certain things like do not do this with this device do not do this with this device that is put there by the manufacturer of the device not to test you or to see how obedient you can be the manufacturer of the device knows that if you do so so and so to the device the device will stop working you will destroy the device so the manufacturer is telling you all the things that you shouldn't do so that the device can last long and you can use it effectively you know the manufacturer wants you to get your money's worth you have already paid for the device he wants you to enjoy it you see so in the same way god's instructions in the bible are that way they are not there to test us or to see how um, obedient we are they are there to save us from destroying ourselves you see and so you can see that patience is an important virtue just like self-contentment is an important virtue. You must learn to be patient. It is extremely important that you are patient. If you are a content creator, you must understand that the fact that right now you are having zero views, that does not mean that you will always have zero views. You see, and that should not make you stop because there's also the matter of purpose. Why are you a content creator? Is this something you are supposed to do? Is this something that God wants you to do? If God wants you to do it, then how dare you stop because you are seeing zero views? You see, zero views or zero subscribers should not stop you from doing what you are doing. And you must understand a certain fact. A lot of people... As a matter of fact, there is hardly a success story, even in the world, that you can hear of where that their first um, works were not um, what you might call flops. You see, when you look at the history of Walt Disney, his first movie, his first cartoon, how did that turn out? It didn't turn out well for him. You see, as a matter of fact, he closed his first studio and later started um, all over again, you see. This kind of stories repeats. A lot of musicians today tell stories of how they were rejected here, they were rejected there, and nobody wanted to work with them. And there are some musicians that boldly tell you today who are very successful. 
that they tell you that when they started, they were actually paying DJs to play their music. And that is a common story. You see, these are people that nobody wanted. But now look at where they are. The same can be said of a lot of authors. There is hardly an author that you will find that will tell you that, ah, I decided to become an author and as I wrote my first book and I submit, submitted it to a publishing house or to an agent, they just accepted it. That is extremely rare. For a lot of authors who are millionaires and billionaires all around the world, they had sent out hundreds of manuscripts and stories, especially screenwriters, those who write scripts for movies. That is a completely different story. They write and write and write and rewrite and rewrite and keep getting rejected until something happened and something changed and things got better. What of it they gave up at that first instance? You see, you must understand the power of perseverance and the importance of perseverance. You, you must understand the value of patience and you must most importantly understand purpose if this is what god wants you to do you have no choice you have to keep doing it you see look at the story of jonah god told jonah to go somewhere to preach he went in his own direction look at how he ended up you see and at the end of the day he still had to go back and do what god told him to do and that is a blessing for him because if he had continued going outside of God's will, Jonah would probably be in hell right now. Not a matter of him being in um, in a world stomach. If he had continued in that direction of doing his own son and going further away from God. You know, you cannot serve God in your own way. You have to understand this. So the question is, are you supposed to be a content creator? Does God wants you God do, does God want you to do it? If God wants you to do it, what why would zero views stop you? You are not doing it for popularity. You must understand why you are doing it. Are you doing it because God wants you to do it, or you are doing it for popularity, or you are doing it so that you will get a large number of views? Okay, what if now it happens that the way for you to get a large number of views is for you to compromise your principles and your beliefs and your virtues or for you to insult God. Will you then insult God and compromise all your beliefs, your values and your virtues? You see? You see what I'm saying? So you have to really understand that. You must know that the fact that this is what God wants you to do is the power pack is it is the power pack that should be like a jet pack that is attached to you and that drives you to keep doing what you have to do you see you have to keep creating content that god wants you to create like i said If having zero views makes you stop producing content instead of improving the content you create, then you don't deserve to have any viewers, as is the case, you see. You must understand that rather than it driving you away from creating more content, you should ask yourself, how should I improve? And that should be what's on your mind. You understand that, okay, this is what you have to do. This is what God wants you to do. Or this is what is good for your business. Perhaps you are creating content to aid your business. You know, that is wonderful. And that is the world we are living in right now. If you own a business, no matter what kind of business it is, it's often to your advantage for you to create content. You see? And... That way, when you have a social media following for your company, for what your business does, you are creating a good customer relations um, bond between you and your customers. It is important that you understand that the world we live in now, because of the strong competition, Things have gone past just having good customer service. You also have to have that relationship and build that relationship with the customer. And having 
a social media presence or an online presence or a way that you can increase or maintain that relationship is good. As a matter of fact, any way that you can increase that relationship or bond between you and the customer is good. It is not just restricted to online and, and the internet. Anything that helps to strengthen the bond and relationship between the business owner and the customer is great for the business owner. You must understand that. So with the points that I've brought forth and the things that we've discussed today, I believe that I have convinced you that you really should keep on creating content. One more thing that I have to mention is that you must understand like even in a situation like um, YouTube or creating podcasts or things of that nature, at the, inst at the beginning instance, you must understand that even though you are having zero views at that first time, if you become popular or known one year, two years, three years down the line, guess what? Your previous content, people will go back and see it. People will watch it, you see. And you see the viewership of that will also increase. The viewership numbers of that will also increase. Even though you are, it's something that you may be creating content for on a weekly or a daily basis. People will still go back to your old content when you become popular, you see. So it is also important that when you are creating that content, now that you are still receiving zero views, put out the best you can. Create the best content you can create. Don't look at it as, ah, I'm just having zero views, one view, two views, three views. And because of that, I am going to just put out slip short work. No, because years in the future, you may be so popular that TV channels and different kinds of medias will want to carry what you are saying or the content that you put out. You see, and what are they going to find? Are they going to find out some power work? Are they going to find quality work? So you must put good quality and put your best. And it is actually putting good quality and putting your best that we actually bring in new viewers and the viewers that you are looking for. You see, so that's it for today. I advise you to go to pastoralfred.com. Make sure you subscribe. That's where you will get alerts of when new broadcasts are available. I also would like you to go to pastoralfred.com slash clothing. There you will see different clothing um, products that I have there. Oh, lots of, a lot of what is there right now are just um, hoodies, t-shirts, and clothes with quotes that I have made. Um, and a lot of those quotes are on the products. That's a good thing for you to check out buy for yourself and buy for your friends also be kind enough to check out alfredandfriends.com slash marketplace it's an online marketplace like amazon.com there you can sign up and on like amazon.com we do not ask for any fee for you to join users join you sign up for free and you can sell anything to anybody no matter where they are anywhere they are in the world you know if you are using our system our online payment system then we take a small percentage of the fee however if you want you can use an external payment system and tell customers where you want them to send the money for what you are selling so that's it for today thank you and god bless you